The Education, Health and Social Care Plan Annual Review. An education, health and care plan is supposed to be a living document, not something that sits on the shelf gathering dust. It should reliably reflect the child or young person's needs and aspirations. That's why the law requires it to be carefully checked each year. This is called the Annual Review. It's a way of making sure the plan is still correct. Parents and young people should see annual reviews as an opportunity to get things changed that are not working as expected, parts F, G, H1 or H2, to update their aspirations, part A, and if necessary, the outcomes, part E, and for any new concerns or needs to be included in parts B, C or D. The annual review is a legal process which means certain things need to happen before the annual review meeting takes place and others afterwards. It takes eight weeks to complete and must be completed by the anniversary of when the plan was first issued or the last review meeting. It can be broken down into five steps. Steps one and two take place during the four weeks before the meeting. Step one is when requests for updated information will be made. This should include information from parents, children and young people, the professionals involved, as well as school assessments, notes from meetings over the past year and observations. This is sometimes referred to as evidence. Step two is when invitations are sent out. This must include the parent or young person. This preparation is to make sure all the right people and an up-to-date picture is available for the meeting. Step three is the meeting itself. The Children and Families Act expects the annual review meeting to look at things from a person-centred point of view. This means that parents, children and young people are fully involved and able to share their views, wishes and feelings. It must consider progress and plan for what needs to happen in the coming year. The meeting must focus on the following seven points and not just look at how things have gone in the past year in school. It must focus on progress made towards achieving outcomes, establish if the outcomes are still appropriate and if necessary, agree new ones, review the short-term targets and set new ones, check that the special educational provision and the arrangements for delivering it is still appropriate and meaning progress can be made, review any health and social care provision, check if the aspirations have changed, and check if the parent or young person would like to request a personal budget. Step four. After the meeting, the host or person leading the review must write a report. This should include details of the discussions of the meeting, including any suggested changes and any disagreements. This must be sent to everyone who was invited to the meeting and to the local authority within two weeks of the meeting having taken place. Step five. When the local authority receives the report, it will make a decision whether the EHC plan should remain unchanged, needs to be updated, or is no longer required. They must inform the parent or young person of their decision no later than four weeks after the meeting. It's important that parents and young people understand what will happen if they agree to the decision and equally what they can do if they disagree. Parents and young people who require additional support are referred to their local information, advice and support service. Further guidance on the annual review process, along with examples of good practice relating to education, health and social care plans, can be found by visiting the Council for Disabled Children website at www.councilfordisabledchildren.org.uk.